I just want to clarify that ultimately what you want is to get the region map drawn onto the template. So you have a choice as to whether you're going to do that by drawing it directly onto the template, which as Grant is just showing you is a tricky business, right, of lining up the template and the brain view that you're looking and translating from, um, from one to the other. The, the alternative is to draw the region directly on the, uh, uh, on the, the brain scan, right, and then transfer it by some means onto the template. So we're going to, Grant started out talking about the first, uh, and that's what we're going to be emphasizing, and, and Olu um, and others will be talking about the process of transferring or mapping, uh, registering it onto the template next week, uh, the ne our next session. But I just wanted you to understand that there's, there's also <coughs> this option of, of drawing it directly onto the template. And for some of our scans, we, as Grant was pointing out, we actually have to do that. Right. Uh, where we don't have the resolution to, to do it otherwise. <laughs> Uh, our choice is, is what has been determined, I think this is true, by how well we could get the war to work. And I think what the view has been enhanced because of the poor resolution of the CT scan and some clinical scans, we can't get a good enough war uh, using the, or the, uh, the program that we have for doing co-registration. And so for those, we have Branch, um, who's a, our um, gold standard um, expert, do the, the drawing directly on you know that well uh, a clinical scan the problem with the clinical scan isn't actually the resolution per se the the doctors will order some number of slices and that's that's the problem is that uh, you know on the slices themselves actually the resolution is quite good um, So uh, thank you, Bernard. So the um, the final uh, product that you're going to be trying to make is something something like this, and you can you know I can kind of do this F11 and and flash it off. You know, so you want to say, well, this is healthy and this is lesioned, and and you know you want to kind of go out to the edge, but not not too far. I might have gone a little too far there, but um, so. Absolutely. So, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to show you the, what the final product is, and, and I'm, I'm, I'll show you a couple slices and how to save and stuff in a second. But uh, one of the things you'll note, so you, you ha you're going to have to make decisions um, about sort of what's lesion and what's not. not. You'll see that not everything that's sort of covered here is like the same uh, shade of gray, right? Uh, um, you have to make a, a one zero decision. It's lesion or not lesion. Um, and a really good way to tell that is by looking on the other side of the brain, right? Generally, people are fairly symmetrical, and you can see that this looks crummy, and this, you know, is not so bad. Um, and and the idea is that you you want your lesion as you as you kind of scroll up through it. There shouldn't be big jumps, right? They, like they should kind of should almost look like a little cartoon movie of of sort of liquid flowing together. Um, I guess is the most poetic way I could put it. Um, so, so you want to, you know, you want to cover as much as you can that you think is lesioned, and you know, you can see I kind of spared this bit as it gets up there. You know, it kind of, it's like you, sometimes it will get spidery. Um, you get these fingers that kind of extend into gyra, and, and it's a question of whether you know to sort of save that or or kill it off. Um, and you, and sometimes you kind of have to use, use your best judgment if if cortex is completely surrounded by lesion, you know, if it seems like, um, like me, so like this bit here, um, you know, so maybe that's healthy, but it's completely surrounded on, on above and below. Um, it's, it's totally cut off. It's not talking to anything. It's not, 
we just kill it off. It's it's dead. It's crummy. Um, so so that's uh, kind of your your goal here. And a big big thing will be to look on on the the other side to see you know does it look normal? Or does it look not so normal? Okay. So uh, how do we get here? Well, you're going to start with something like this. Um, and what I suggest it is actually we're going to jump down here to. Uh, identifying lesion tissue and tracing. Um, I actually suggest going through in the corro so so we do most of our, our tracing in in this axial view. Um, I suggest going through and and checking out the lesion in the coronal view. Now you'll see this uh, is actually squished. This has been downsampled. So the other two views are going to appear smushed because every other slice has been taken out so that you don't have to draw every you know all of the slices. You only have to draw half of them. Um, which will save time and tedium. So um, what you can then do is you kind of scroll through here, just kind of check it out. You're like, okay, you can see it's over there. It's a pretty big lesion. Kind of get a sense for where it is. You're like, oh, that, might, that part might be a little tricky in here. Um, and then if you go through and just sort of very briefly, you just kind of draw like a quick outline there. Uh, go a couple more slices. Especially around the areas that you think are going to be problematic, and I will, I will point some of those out to you soon. Um, that'll be the next sort of topic. And, you know, you can just kind of go through. And I said, you know, you can be fairly rough about it at this at this stage. to belabor the point, but <laughs> maybe not that callous. Um, okay. And then when you go back to your axial view, you get this nice little uh, sort of dotted line that, that marks it. Um, and it's really helpful for, so for something like this, you know, you're like, oh, do I keep it? Do I not? Well, you can tell from your outline that you drew, you know, that, that yes, you will kill that. Um, and you can see, how, and you can see, you know, that it kind of follows the the contours of of the lesion quite nicely. And you can say, uh, you know, so for all this stuff, you know, you can kind of go, oh yeah, you know, maybe I'll I'll kill all that, but then up here, you know, maybe not. So, so in any case, um, this is just sort of to help give you a, a quick guideline for where some of the trouble spots are going to be. You're going to have to go back and clean this up, right? So you dr so once you use your sign point posts here, you know, you're going to be using F11 a lot. You can clean up the edges. You can take some of this off. Oh, I took a little too much there. I'm going to do this. You can see how this might get tedious. Uh, you know, you want to clean up these little ones sticking off at the side there. That guy went too far. You don't want to go out in the ventricle. That's a no-no. And take some of this white matter off. So you're just going to be doing a lot of, you know, cleaning up the edges. You take some off, put it back on, and you, you got to go all the way around. You got to be uh, very careful, you know, over here, uh, not to go too far out in the dura. I probably went over on the dura there, and then here. So. It gets time consuming. Um, so there are. So there, are, you may be asking, if it's so time consuming, why don't you use one of the programs that does it automatically? And there are. There are programs that do this automatically. Um, the problem is that you know they they have you know the same problem that any computer program has. It doesn't get everything right all the time. You know, it's very rigid, um, and they're not nearly as good at pattern recognition as we are. Um, and so what ends up happening is it, it's usually pretty good about filling in the middle, um, but you have to go back and clean up the edges, <laughs> which obviously is kind of like the big issue anyway. That's what takes up the most time anyway, so we don't even bother with the computerized one. You just kind of... Um, I've I've actually um, used uh, a number of things. I, I I tried the the tablet pencil. I, you know, it's it's kind of a matter of personal preference. I I actually I think maybe just because I started using the mouse because I have more experience like with you know using paint or when I like um, that it it I just feels more natural with the mouse. But but yeah, I mean we we did actually get pens at one point to to do this. Um, 
some people like them, some people, you know, take them or leave them. Um, I'm not, yeah, I don't know that it actually makes it any easier. You're, you're still kind of doing this, like, oh, add one, you know, is that lesion? And you kind of, you know, oh, well, maybe I'll add two here. And you're going to be doing that a lot. <laughs> I mean, no matter whether you do it with a pen or a mouse, you know, it's uh, not really here to there. Okay, so um, then, you know, once you get your, your one slice all, you know, nice and exactly the way you like it, then you go to the next slice and you do it again. You do it again and again and again and again for all these slices. This one? Um, I've played with it, but I've never really gotten it to, to so it's, it's really like the best I've gotten is kind of the, the same situation where it gets most of it, but you still have to do the edges, which is the hard part anyway. Um, Yeah, and and I mean the other thing is, uh, you know, it it, se it was it seemed like a lot of um, front end playing around to not get that much out of it. I mean, um, especially because the intensity issue, you know, we're really using sort of our um, com computational power as humans to recognize these patterns. Um, computers are not really very good at this because um, it's this lesion, no lesion. It's you know. Yeah, and as a and so my sort of disclaimer about reasonable neurologists may differ comes more into play when you're actually training with branch because you know a lot of times you know you you look at something and say it's it's lesion tissue and he says it's not um, or vice versa um, and you know one neuro I'm not I'm not a neurologist so whatever branch says is you know that's the that's what it is um, and and that's kind of so just. For those of you who are planning to sort of go forward with that training, there's some frustration in being like, "Well, I thought I did it right," um, but it's 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 not just pattern recognition at, uh, as far as looking at this. It's also kind of guessing what, what Branch would do with these patterns. And the, only, the other thing is that Branch has been a little bit of a moving target over exactly. the years. Right. Exactly. So he's kind of refined his own methods. Right. Doing this. And he has a lot of implicit bias yeah, right. which is hard for him to vocalize sometimes. Why this is a reason and this is in. Absolutely. Right. The anatomy and, and just this practice, yeah. Is, you know, likely not to be undercut by this area of cortex. This is not likely to be important. So, yeah, just, yeah, it was just a disclaimer, you know, if you're going to do this and you feel like, no, my answer was right, you know, there's probably somebody out there who will agree with you. But, you know, we really have to sort of get on the same page um, with Branch. Yeah. 